The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Did you know God wants you to succeed in every area of your life? He doesn't want to see you sick, broke, or lonely. He wants you to live a joyful and abundant life. And when you discover His favor, you'll find both practical and supernatural benefits. There is no formula for it. It's just the favor of God. And He has that same heart for you. He doesn't just love you. He really likes you. This month, request Jensen Franklin's new three CD series, Finding the Favor of God. In it, you will discover how to frame your world with favor, how to expect favor, recognize it, and walk into the brand new opportunities that he has for you. Acknowledge the favor of God, and every time you experience it, watch it increase. If you'll acknowledge it every time you see it, and thank God for it, watch it increase. It's time for you to stop depending on your own efforts to succeed and start depending on the favor of God. No matter where you are in your life as a Christian, you'll learn more about God and His favor as you allow this series to change your life. Convert your thinking and fuel your faith. Set yourself on the path to guaranteed success today. Request finding the favor of God and start experiencing God's unlimited supply of favor in your life. Go with me to the book of Genesis. It's where I feel like I'm supposed to go tonight. 40, I believe it's 45. I want to teach you on four ways... God will provide for you. Four ways God will provide for you. How many of you believe God is your provider? The Old Testament pattern shows us how God deals with His people, Israel. And the Scripture said it was written for our learning. In other words, they were natural Israel, but we are spiritual Israel. And how God dealt with natural Israel he is, is a pattern of the same way that He will deal with you and I, spiritual Israel. And the first thing that I want to tell you, there are four ways that I could find that God will provide for you. And the first way that he will provide for you is, number one, God will provide for you through the hand of man. God will use men and women and people to provide for you. Genesis 45, verse 7 and verse 8, this is Joseph talking to his brothers that had hurt him and now they're in a famine starving to death and he is the prime minister of Egypt and he has the keys to the, all the corn in the earth. Everybody else was out of corn. Joseph had it in silos. And he says in verse 7 to those who did him so wrong, and God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Listen. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. What he was saying was, God has blessed me so I can provide for you, my family. The first way that God provides is through the hand of man. So don't be fussy about how he does it. Don't be fussy and picky about who he uses to provide the needs and gives you opportunity to do business with. Don't tell God who you think he can and cannot use to provide for you. Because God can use some strange people to bless you. God used Pharaoh to provide for his people. Pharaoh, an evil idolater who worshiped statues and, and uh, hundreds of gods, and yet God used Pharaoh to provide for the Hebrew people. You cannot put God in a box. Luke 6, 38, and I want you to remember this verse. Everybody say, give. Let's read it out loud. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Notice that men, different kind of men and women, God will raise up to provide for you. He used ravens to feed the prophet Elijah. And a raven is not supposed to pick up food and take it to somebody and give it to them. A raven doesn't deliver food, it eats food. Anything it can get. But God changed the nature of that bird so that it would take care of his prophet in a famine. God knows how to take care of you, and he will supply. God will never let you depend on anyone individually too long. Just if you get to depending on any particular person, what you do is you circumvent the blessing of God because you're, that person is not your source. That person is the, is the means that God is blessing you temporarily. God is your source. And he will always, so when people leave your life or when business deals that you were counting on, you thought who you would have the rest of your life, don't sweat it. God has lots of people, men, that will give unto your bosom. And I want you to start claiming this promise that God will provide for me through the hands of men. That when I get up and I go to work today, God is going to prosper me and bless me and cause me to have these connections in life, these associations in life that men will give unto my bosom. I believe that. Not only will God supply your need and provide for you through the hands of men, but the second way that God provides is from his own hand. After 70 years of being fed by Pharaoh, the Bible said there arose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Now I want you to see this. For 70 years... Pharaoh took care of Joseph and took care of his people, therefore all the nation of Israel. But there arose another Pharaoh because that one died and another one came in his place and the Bible said he knew not Joseph. Panic time. You're not in the clique anymore. This is where you learn man is not your source. God is your source, and he will sometimes provide for you through the hand of man, and then there are times when God himself will supernaturally provide for you. Suddenly, the link was broke. Suddenly, he had no inside ability to get to the Pharaoh. And it reminds us of the fact that Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. This is called forced dependency. This is when you have to get back down on your knees and remind yourself that man is not your source alone. God will use men to give to me, but God, it's from your hand to their hand into my hand. And I'm coming back to you. I'm looking to you. I'm honoring you with my giving. I want a system going while, you know, this is what I, we like to get it where it's so wonderful that everything's just clicking and everything's just happening and you don't even hardly have to pray. You just, you just pray lightly and everything's, the money's just flowing. But how many of you know that usually when things are like that, we don't pray like we ought to? Elijah had it made. He had a bird feeding him every day, two meals a day. And he had the river flowing with water. And the Bible said the brook dried up. What do you do when your brook dries up? What do you do when your money source dries up? What do you do when the business dries up? It drove Elijah back to his source. The brook was not his source. Listen carefully. The brook was his system. The brook was the system. God was the source. And your business is the system 
but God is the source. And I'm saying to you that God himself then spoke to the prophet and said, go to the widow woman. I've commanded her. She's down to her last meal. She doesn't have any hope either. And if she will obey you with her last meal, give and it shall be given unto you. But if she eats her last meal, then she's going to miss the harvest for the next three and a half years that will sustain her and her son through the famine. I'm saying to you that if I were the devil, I would tell people that giving doesn't really matter because he knows that that one offering from that woman kept her son and her alive through the famine. I want you to see that it's through the hand of God that he gives. Look with me in Exodus. If you've got your Bible, turn there to the book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 14. And when the layer of dew lifted, the children of Israel were out in the wilderness. On the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. And so when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Now I want you to notice a couple things about this food and provision that came from the hand of God. God said, I'm going to give it to you. And sometimes it's hard to recognize the blessing that God is bringing to you because you don't always see it. And sometimes he's repositioning you through a transition to get you ready for a new miracle. I'm about to give you bread from heaven, God says. And God doesn't give everybody the same amount. If you keep reading that story, it said that if you had a household of two people, God would give them one loaf of manna, but if you had a household of six people, he would give them three times that amount. So everybody didn't get the same. It was according to what they, the people that they had in their household. When God prospers you, he will do it according to the size of your assignment. Look at Philippians chapter 4. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And everybody shouts, yeah! No, 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 no. No, that's what they do. They don't even know what that's tied to. Now, folks, God is a fair God. In order to understand that, you have to go back to verse 15. Now, you Philippians, this is who he was talking to that he made that promise to. You know how in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you, even the Thessalonica, uh, you sent aid once again for my necessities, and now I can tell you on the authority of God's Word because you helped me take the gospel to the lost all over the world when nobody else would do it. My God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Number three, God will meet your needs from your own hand. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 12, And the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of, the, of Cana that year. We, we read right over that and think nothing. For 40 years, God fed them three times a day with bread from heaven. And now, after 40 years of never having to lift a finger for their food and provision, God says, as soon as they get into the promised land, the manna will cease. Panic. Panic. God transitioned them, and he said, sometimes I'll cause men 
to meet and provide your need. Sometimes I will supernaturally, I'll cause the IRS. How many of you know that would be the supernatural? <laughs> I'll cause the IRS to send you a check back in the mail from seven years ago. I might be speaking to somebody right now, and you better tithe on it when you get it too. The, how many of you have ever had God supernaturally provide for you? Let me see your hand. I mean, I mean supernaturally provide. Just, it, there's, it made no sense the way the money came. And then he says there will be seasons where I'm going to use your own hand. The manna's going to cease. It's just going to be hard work. You're going to get out and sow and reap. You're going to get up and work. You're going to get out and get it. I'll use your own hand. You can't just kick back and expect me to do everything. God says, I won't do for you what you can do for yourself. Go help yourself. If everything's shut down on you, go back to school. I mean, it's your seats. Beat sitting around eating Cheetos, you know, get, getting your unemployment. Nothing wrong with that if you're going through unemployment for a season. But why not better yourself? Why not do any and everything you can? Why not, why not do any, anything, man? I, I'd pick up Coke bottles if I had to. God blesses people who are busy. He calls people who are busy. When people come to me and say, I, 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 can't, I can't find a job nowhere, I, can't, I, don't, I don't have no and I think the Lord wants me to work in the church for you. You don't want to work for me like that. Come on, let's get real. Deuteronomy 11 and 9 that you may prolong your days in the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers and your descendants. Listen to this. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, this is strange. Look at the next verse. For the land which you go in to possess is not like the land of Egypt, listen to this, from which you have come, where you sowed your seed, listen, and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. I, I saw that, and I couldn't figure out what that was talking about, and I looked it up today. And this is what they said. In Egypt, the only way that they could uh, irrigate their fields was by foot pumps. That they would draw water from the Nile River with foot, with foot pumps. And that they'd get a, just enough out in that desert with pipes and things and foot pumps. But God said, I'm taking you out of a land where you've had foot pumps squirting a little bit of water out, and I'm taking you into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. You're coming off the pump and into the flow. So I'll, I'll provide for you through the hand of man. I'll provide for you through the hand of God. I'll provide for you through your own hand. And lastly, God will provide for you by the hand of your enemy. Twelve went into the promised land. Ten came back and said, Oh, there's so f much fruit. It's flowing with milk and honey. But the giants are too big. The majority of people still see the giant problems and say, yes, but. In Numbers 14 and verse 9, God says this, Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. Everybody read the next part of that sentence. For they are our bread. The, one, the, go, go to the King James translation because it says, For they are bread for us. Who they? Who, who's, who's they? Our enemies. In other words, God is saying, I am going to feed you through the hand 
of your enemy. I'm going, you're, you're actually going to reach a point that you feed off of their attacks. You feed off your haters. They actually encourage you. Satanic attack is actually a sign that you are a high-value target. It means you have something worth attacking. The level of the attack is going to tell you two things. It's going to tell you, number one, how valuable you are to God in your assignment. And the level of blessing that is waiting for you when you get through this attack. That is what the attack is all about. It's telling you the value you are in the assignment that God has given you. And it's telling you the level of blessing that God has on the other side of the attack. If you will be willing and obedient, steadfast and unmovable, never quit, never give up, God will bless you. God will provide for you. God can use anybody, anywhere, anytime to meet your needs. Now I want to end with a couple of scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food and he supplies and multiplies the seed that you hold on to and put in your pocket. He multiplies the seed that you have and increases the fruits of your righteousness. You either believe that stuff or you don't. And I believe it down to my bones because I have experienced it. Let's clap and praise God for the truth of His Word. So say this with me. He multiplies seed that is sown. He gives seed to sowers. Am I a sower? Have I given anything that God can multiply? Because 2 Corinthians 9 says, He that sows little, reaps little. He that sows generously, reaps generously. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but I believe that God has a system whereby all the needs of your life and His, and His kingdom are met. And you just heard me teach on it. And when you're willing to obey the Word of God in this area, God says, I'll provide for you through the hands of men, through the hands of God, through the hands of yourself, and even cause your enemies to become bread for you. And I'll prepare a table before you, a banquet in the presence of your enemies. Some of them won't even like you and say, there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raise your hand up and praise God with me right here. This is good news. Some of you are stressed out about your finances, beat up by the enemy. The devil told you God doesn't love you, doesn't care about you. What a liar he is. He cares about it, everything everything concerning you. If he's got the number of hairs numbered on your head, he cares about what you drive, where you live, what you wear, what you need, what you have, what you don't have. He cares. I want to pray with you today as you are watching this program. I don't believe it's by chance. I believe in kingdom connections. I believe that God can can know what you're going through and send a preacher into your life to speak a message that speaks to that 
situation in your life. And I believe while you've been listening today that God has done that in your life. So why not open up your heart? Why not, why not just start all over today and give your life completely to Jesus Christ? Sell out. Maybe you've never prayed that prayer. I want to pray with you. Right where you are, you can experience the power and presence of Jesus Christ. He always comes where he's invited. So open up and invite him. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender everything to you. Forgive me. Cleanse me of my sins through your precious blood. I receive it by faith. I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again, and I believe you've come to live in me today with me. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. In Jesus' name, that's a powerful name, in Jesus' name, and I speak healing and health over your body today. If you're sick, just be healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm excited about what's happening. We're getting close to a miracle in Haiti. We're just a few, uh, few months away from the grand dedication of our miracle marketplace, over 20 acres full of buildings where over 2,600 Haitian people are gonna be employed. We're gonna dedicate that facility for the glory of God, debt free, over a million dollars that we've been able to send. We still need your help. We aren't quite there. We, we're close and if you can help us, put us over the top, we would greatly appreciate it. I know God will bless you because he said when you give to the poor, you lend to God. And that, that is the truth. And, you know, I believe that as we sow and make miracles happen for these precious people in Haiti, God can make it happen in our own house, in our own life, in our own business. And you can do something today. Pray about what God would have you do. Really, just take a moment. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, if you've received, you know, from the Word of God that we bring, this is a way you can make a difference in somebody else's life. Help us make that miracle happen in Haiti. Thank you. Pray for us. I'm praying for you. I'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection. Life is real. Vivid. Alive. Beating. Breathing. It happens behind closed doors and out in front. There's joy. There's laughter and chaos. Lifelong friendships are forged. Love is found. Moments cherished. And never forgotten. Life is a gift. And together, we are real family. Real friends. Real people. Experiencing real life. This is Free Chapel. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast, go online at jensenfranklin.org.